Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about a very, very, very important topic for me personally and that's how I stop my tooth decay and gum recession because just a couple of years ago my teeth and gums were in such a state that I was really worried to lose them. It was so stressful because my teeth were painful 24 hours a day, my gums were receding so quickly and I could feel my teeth moving, they were so unstable. And then I got to the point where I couldn't even eat steak anymore because I couldn't chew it. I'm not even talking about steak, come on. I couldn't even chew lettuce because it was too hard for me. Yes, that's what I was just a couple of years ago and I was totally freaking out. But luckily I fixed it all, my teeth are really strong and healthy now and in this video I'm going to show you what exactly I did to get from A to B. So my teeth were never extremely healthy, I always had probably a cavity a year and I know it might sound really horrible for you if you have never had a cavity in your life but for me it was alright um, because I literally lived on sugar from the day I was born. I ate incredible amounts of sugar before I turned to a healthy lifestyle. So one cavity a year eating that much sugar I don't think was that bad. However, when I was going through this really rough time with my teeth, just two or three years ago, I actually got six cavities in a year. And this was so much worse than anything I ever experienced that as you can imagine, I completely freaked out. Not only was it going to cost me a fortune to fix all those teeth, but also I was afraid to lose them. So my problem started, you know, proper big problem started when First of all, we went vegetarian a few years ago and we stayed vegetarian for a couple of years. And when we went vegetarian, we replaced a lot of meat with dairy products. And dairy products are very high in calcium. And as I have some kind of inherited problem with magnesium absorption or magnesium um, processing my body, um, because every single woman on my mom's side has this problem with low magnesium and low potassium, I have no idea why it is. But the problem is, because I was already prone to having low magnesium, when I started consuming all this excess calcium, I couldn't absorb magnesium properly anymore, and I got this massive imbalance between magnesium and calcium. And what magnesium is, does is basically dissolves the calcium in your blood that you get from the food, and sends it to the right places like the teeth and the bones, but if there is no magnesium, the calcium can't be dissolved can be used, can be deposited in the right places and what happens is that it gets deposited in soft tissues, arteries, your joints, your muscles and that's really not something you want and also then you get all kinds of build up on your teeth like tartar and you have to go and get your teeth cleaned up and I had it so bad during those two or three years of really bad dental health. So that was such a strong clue of magnesium deficiency but at that time I wasn't so clued up, so I didn't pick up the signs. I wish I had. So I started having some major issues around the time and I had my second um, canal done in my whole life during that period. And I was already like ringing the bells, you know, the bells of danger for me, but I wasn't too concerned. However, when we went to paleo a few years ago, that's when things really got bad because paleo is notoriously very low in magnesium because whole grains and legumes are some of the main sources of magnesium in people's diets. So when I gave those things up, I was literally getting no magnesium apart from some magnesium from green leaves, but you know, how much salad can you actually eat? And plus, even if you ate two salads a day, it's still going to be such a tiny amount of magnesium compared to how much you would get from legumes and whole grains. So my magnesium just went down like crazy while I was on the paleo diet and obviously I was still eating some dairy so my calcium was still quite high and that this balance between the two became even worse. Also the paleo diet gave me hypothyroidism. My thyroid completely tanked possibly because of this magnesium deficiency and calcium overload and healthy thyroid is extremely important for healthy teeth as well. So everything just went so bad during the paleo diet. I was in so much pain that I couldn't even sleep at night. I was, honestly, I couldn't live. I couldn't go out and speak during winter day because the cold wind on my teeth was so painful. I couldn't chew anything. I honestly couldn't enjoy my life anymore. And I was sometimes dreaming about just 
getting all my teeth out and getting dentures or something because it was so painful and I was sick and tired of it. Luckily then I went off the paleo diet because I realized that it was literally killing me and I introduced all of the food groups that had always been so healthy for me and I realized around the time also that I was really low in magnesium and so magnesium is really the number one star in my healing journey. When I started taking extra magnesium, my teeth started getting stronger and stronger every single day. So I was taking magnesium supplements every single day, probably around 500 to 600 milligrams per day of oral magnesium. And obviously this is just what I did. If you want to try magnesium, do your own research and find your own, um, your own dosage that will work for you. This is just what worked for me. So I was taking that and I was also applying magnesium oil on my body topically almost every single day and sometimes I was also spraying magnesium on my toothbrush when I was brushing my teeth to deliver that magnesium right into the mouth as well and that helped a lot to to get rid of all the buildup of calcium all the tartar in my in my teeth on my teeth it was really brilliant the second thing that helped me immensely was stopping to floss and that might sound counterintuitive because obviously all the dentists, well not all, but most dentists say that flossing is vital, but it's not, not in my case, not in a lot of people with sensitive skin and sensitive gums, because what flossing does is basically it disconnects the gum, the sensitive gum tissue from the tooth. And what I started getting, I, I mean, I never flossed in my life, um, but as soon as I started flossing, more or less around the time is when my serious gum trouble started. And I believe it is very much because of flossing, because flossing basically created these pockets between my teeth, which I never had before. And after flossing for hours, I had throbbing and pain in my mouth and it was driving me crazy. And as soon as I stopped flossing, within a week, my gums started growing back and I didn't get pain in my gums anymore. And I realized that by trying to make it better, I actually made my dental health much worse. So what works much better for me is this very funny tool, which my husband loves, by the way. It looks like this. I think it's called Gum Trainer or something like this. I'll leave a link to a similar thing down in the description box. But it's basically this copper thing that looks like a dentist tool with a rubber, with a sharp rubber tip. And I use that sharp rubber tip to gently coax any kind of um, stuck food from between my teeth. So I have probably three or four problem areas where food tends to collect. So every time I brush my teeth, I just use this thing to get the food out. And in this way, I don't need to use any kind of floss. And this thing, because it's made of rubber, it's very, very soft, very gentle. It doesn't upset my gums in any way. I also rinse with water very well after every single meal, which is also very important. Another thing you can do is oil pulling. I used to do oil pulling for a couple of years, but I feel like it only made my dental health worse. It didn't work for me. However, it helped so many people in the world, so I highly recommend trying it. I, I also made a video in the past about oil pulling, so I'll link it down in the description box as well. But in my opinion, flossing is really not a good thing unless you have very robust gums that are not sensitive to anything. And for example, my husband, he has almost never had any cavities. He has the strongest, most beautiful teeth I've ever seen. And he's never, he's never ever flossed in his life, you know, only if he feels there's something stuck in between his teeth, then you'll use a toothpick for just that part, you know, for just that place between the teeth. But he never actually flosses as a habit, and I believe that's why he has really healthy teeth. So, I know that it's a controversial topic, you might not agree with me, but I'm just sharing what worked for me. And I also read a few interviews with dentists who are also against flossing so flossing is really not the only way to keep your teeth healthy the next thing i did which is also very very important is i went back to um, fluoride toothpaste again this is quite a controversial topic i know you might not agree with me but it is one of the most important things in my healing journey so when i became natural and started getting into more natural lifestyle i ditched toothpaste with fluoride because you know, we are told in the media, and in the blogs, and in the books that fluoride is so bad for us and of course fluoride in water and drinking water is horrible for you. However, fluoride in toothpaste, you know, you don't really swallow them. You rinse your mouth out anyway. For me personally, it's a necessary evil because the benefits from it are greater than the dangers and so I, I personally prefer and make the choice to use it. Since I introduced 
toothpaste with fluoride, my teeth started getting stronger every single day. And I tried to get off fluoride toothpaste again three different times. And each time within around a week, I started getting pain and the feeling of soft teeth again. And then my mom and my sister did exactly the same experiment three times and every time they had the same experience, every time, every time they tried to ditch fluoride toothpaste, they started getting really painful teeth. And not just one tooth or two teeth where you would think that maybe you got a cavity, but literally the whole mouth. And it's the worst feeling in the world. And also another kind of personal anecdote. My sister, she didn't have any cavities for around five or six years. And when she got off the fluoride toothpaste for six months or so, she ended up having her first cavity in many, many years. And that again, for me, is a proof that fluoride is very important for healthy teeth. I'm not saying for everybody, but for me and my family, it's very important. And I also read something that when you grow up using fluoride toothpaste, your tooth structure kind of changes and it can't function without fluoride anymore. So if you grew up in a totally natural environment without any fluoride, then your teeth might be perfectly healthy because the structure is made to be without fluoride. Um, just with a natural fluoride you would get from the water and food. But if your teeth grew up and developed with fluoride and you suddenly take it away, you might end up paying a very high price for it. So I would suggest to definitely keep an open mind and yes, of course, there's lots of information about the dangers of fluoride. Um, but if it's something that can help you keep your teeth healthy, I think it's, for me personally, it's a price I'm willing to pay. So definitely do your own research. And talking about toothpaste, I'm using this one at the moment. It's Ultradex and I love it because it's pretty natural. Um, it's not my favorite though. There is another one that I really love called Aura Dent or a nurse or a nurse and it's a, an unflavored toothpaste made specially for autistic children and I love it so much just because it doesn't have any flavor and it has lots of xylitol which is also so good for the teeth. So these two are my favorite toothpaste and uh, I guess that's it talking about fluoride. Next thing I did was I replaced my medium toothbrush with a soft toothbrush and I'm still using a soft toothbrush until now because soft toothbrush is not going to brush your animal off if you have a really sensitive and soft animal. I have animal like that for my birth literally and also it's not going to irritate your gums because over brushing and, and pushing the toothbrush too much is often one of the main reasons for gum recession. So that made a huge difference for me and I don't think I will ever go back to electrical toothbrushes or medium toothbrushes because Soft toothbrush works really well for me. And if I want some more whitening or exfoliating options, I can always just use some baking soda on top of my toothpaste. Instead of just using this super harsh toothbrush every single day on my teeth, I'd rather just use something once in a while, but not traumatize my teeth and gums like that every single day. The next thing I did was take some more zinc supplements because I was on the pill for a long time, so my zinc was really low because the pill depletes zinc and I made a video about it. I'll link it down in the description box as well. But basically I realized that my zinc was very low when I did the DIY zinc test as well. And so I started taking some zinc and that helped my teeth a lot. And just one important thing to note is that if you're going to try taking zinc, make sure that you balance it with the correct ratio of copper because those two things always need to go together in order to be absorbed properly. And I made a video in the past as well about how to deal with zinc deficiency. So check the link out in the description box. God, I've made so many videos about so many different topics that now I am tempted to say I made a video about this, I'll link it out in the description box every single time because there are videos about everything. I never thought I was going to get to this point. <laughs> it's getting interesting. The next thing that really helped me to heal my teeth and gums was preparing my food properly. So I made sourdough bread, I soaked my grains, I soaked my porridge. I also soaked or sprouted all my legumes. So proper food preparation was really important to me just to maximize the amount of nutrition I get from food. And I would definitely recommend for you to do the same if you have um, any kind of tooth decay or gum recession. And if you want to learn more about traditional food preparation methods, definitely check out a book called Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon because it's like a bible of traditional food 
and preparation methods. It's a great book. And of course, I stayed away from any kind of refined sugar. I still ate some whole food sugars and I ate fruit. I ate gluten, I ate dairy, I ate all kinds of food groups and I tried to keep my, my diet as varied as possible just to keep my metabolism up and to maximize the chance of getting as many nutrients as possible and I think that was very important because being on a paleo diet or being on a vegetarian diet, basically limiting my diet in any way was definitely not making me or my teeth or my gums any healthier and only when I embraced a very varied, complete diet only then my body could finally finally relax and start healing itself. And the last thing I did was visualizing and doing affirmations because a body is only as powerful as the mind. So if you try to heal your body but you're not engaging your mind, if you don't actually believe that you can heal your body, it probably won't happen because your mind or your thoughts is what makes reality. So I made sure that I visualized myself having really strong teeth, healthy teeth, healthy gums. I did that almost every single day. And at the beginning, I could not imagine it. I could not believe it. But after a while, it actually became a fact. Like I knew it was going to happen. And that's when things really started to change. And that's when I started being led to the right decisions and the right products and the right foods. And everything just unfolded itself. And affirmations, of course, it's kind of like visualization. They go together. So I was telling myself that my teeth are healthy, my teeth are healing, my gums are growing back, you know, things like that. And it might sound funny, you know, it might sound like a cliche, but it helps so much and I truly believe in the power of mind. So I guess this is my story. This is how I healed my teeth and gums. And the latest update, I went to my dentist in June and he fixed any of the cavities that I had. Luckily, I haven't had any kind of new cavities for around two years now. I haven't had any more gum recession. I actually reversed some of the cavities and some of the gum recession. My gums are getting stronger every single day to this, to this day. And they're not moving anymore. They're very stable, very strong. And I can now chew almonds and sticks and eat salad, of course, and chew anything without any kind of troubles, without even thinking because nothing is painful anymore. And that is truly a miracle. So I hope that you found this video interesting and inspiring. If you are yourself going through tooth decay or gum recession right now, don't give up. Read as much as you can. Research, listen to your body, work on your mind and you will find healing too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.